What's up and good morning guys. Welcome to uh, my truck graveyard apparently is what a uh, Rhino Ranch is becoming. This, the crew cab OBS would be here. Um, it is broken down as well. We haven't fixed that issue yet, but we got Dedex uh, K20 that has seen better days. We got Chris's work flatbed over there that needs a new alternator. And we got Chris broken down over here who needs, what, what are we taking? We got some Advil? <laughs> Chris needs a new back. But today is uh, like, I don't know, day three of improving this place, making the, the bigger, better, better ranch, the PBR. And uh, you know, we're gonna fuel up the old Yanmar here. We still got our buddy James's uh, skits here down there. We got the cat down there. But we're gonna fill up the Yanmar because today we're kind of shifting gears back from uh, building fencing. And today we're gonna work on doing a bunch of trenching to get all of like true water lines up to all the animals. If you guys remember when we did the original tour of this property, um, the previous owner had run basically hoses everywhere. The, the backyard, there were sprinklers, but they were all on hoses and hose timers. So we've been working on switching that out to a full sprinkler system. We've actually got Abel down there. What up Abel? We got Abel down there. Abel! They're working on putting the valves in right now. And then what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be tapping off the guest house right here, the main water line coming in and we're gonna run um, hard water lines up to each of the animal enclosures. So we'll be running one up to the, the chicken coop over there. Um, the pig one's already got one obviously next to it and then we're gonna be running one up to um, all the animals up here. And my main goal is to get away from the big giant water troughs. Obviously we'll leave a few of those around um, for the animals, but we wanna get into having um, auto waterers. You see all the animals are up here, even the peacocks are hanging out. What's up guys? Good to see you all. Good to see you all. Good morning. Good morning. We didn't anticipate the ground being as hard as it was when we were doing the fencing. We realized just how hard this ground is. I'm hoping up here um, we don't run into more, any more hard veins of ground. But there's probably a good reason they put the animal enclosure here up at the elevation that it is because digging down was just probably not fun. So our plan is teeing off right there the main supply. You can see this orange line coming through. Now this is subject to change because we're trying to see right now what the best way to shoot it up over into those animal stalls are without dealing with what I'm sure is gonna be a ton of absolute roots in the ground from these two trees especially, but this one might as well. Um, I'm eventually gonna wanna move and possibly now this little horse wash station here, and I don't know exactly what you call these. I don't know the industry term, but this is kinda in the way. It's in the worst spot, so we might move it and relocate it. And then from here, we're gonna run a water line directly over to the chicken coops, that way they have dedicated water. Barbecue's been running around today. We got uh, Papa Rhino, you'll see him in the background over there. Uh, he brought everybody some treats, uh, all the animals are are eating good. He stopped at the produce stand. They're very, very happy. And here we've got one of the auto waterers that we're going to be using. Um, I know there's a bunch of different brands. This one was at Tractor Supply. I think that's a pretty good capacity. And if you guys don't know what these do, basically they have a little float in here that when the water level runs low, the float drops down and then uh, automatically refills it up. It saves you from having to dump an absolute ton of water when you have big troughs like that. I mean, that one's not that big, but if you look at like this size of trough, these guys always drink with their mouths full, so you get a bunch of hay and stuff in there and the water can get nasty really quick. And they don't like dirty water. So I think having auto waterers everywhere, you know, assuming they learn to use them and they're happy with them, then uh, we'll eliminate wasting a lot of water. Especially right now, being that we still don't have our pump house. Um, I'm anticipating in the next couple of days we should have a fully functioning pump and being able to get some water back out of our well. But right now, we are still using my little purified water setup right here, which you can see how dirty that filter is already. Um, this thing's working great. It's pulling all the rust out of the water that's in that tank. But we will be getting um, at least one, if not many more tanks, but obviously budget permitting. I'm gonna get as many tanks as I can afford because we have learned water is very important out here. And one of the other things we're gonna do since we're bringing water up to the stalls here is we're going to be throwing a hand wash sink in the corner right here and then we'll probably just dig a little pit behind it, throw some gravel in it, that way it just drains right there. It's all gray water, so it's not that big a deal. We got us 10 gallons of diesel. Uh, should last enough for today on this little booger right here. Papa Rhino burned through a lot of diesel. Just, I'm, again, we're not really sure what he was doing the other day, but he was uh, doing a lot of tree demo. <laughs> all right, where's the fuel fill up here on the old Yanmar? Oh my God, are we in here? Door number one, there we go. Today's episode of how to spill five gallons of diesel. Look, Ma, no hose. Come on, dog, you got that. Got it? Got it. Just like use your tires. back. Just use your back. Oh, you're gonna use these big legs. The pig's gonna be happy. She got a lot of mud coming down. Hopefully the old Yanmar's up to the task here. You're about to start digging, Chris? Yeah. All right. Oh, geez. 
Hey, man, why don't you use this big ass tractor right here? Oh, okay. First bite's gonna show us if this is gonna work or not. It's gonna be a long day. speak too soon but once we got through like the top crust layer it's actually not that bad down below again this is kind of close to where the guest house was built so there's a good chance a lot of this is filled dirt versus what we're about to encounter as we get up this top of this hill Now what I'm doing over here is I'm digging it way further down than I'm sure most people would. Most would just keep it consistent at about the like, I don't know, 16, 24 inches that I've gone here. Actually, most people wouldn't even go that deep, but I don't want to run into ever hitting water lines again. You can see up here at the top of my trench, um, I don't know if it was the owner I bought it from or the previous owners. There was a bunch of irrigation lines in here that have been basically abandoned. And you can see that thing's probably six to eight inches down below the surface. We don't want to run into any more irrigation lines, none of the new stuff that we're putting in. So I dug this thing super, super deep, and I know it's going to be dark, so hopefully you guys can see that on camera. Reason being, I don't like slopes everywhere. You know, I grew up doing uh, retaining walls and all that, so to us, like, just grading something out to a slope, not exactly my style. There's a good chance at some point I'm going to come in here and grade this whole area flat and then put some type of retaining wall right there. I mean, the dirt might retain it. Not really sure. I want to go through one rainy season just to see kind of how the property handles it. The reason this little hump right here and this kind of berm is here is this is the drainage that comes off of the yard over there and it kind of shuttles it all the way out. Um, there's another one similar right there that gets it all the way down the driveway. So what we're going to try and do uh, is, you know, eliminate anything that can come up in the future. Same my first rodeo um, and I want to make sure that we, we plan ahead. Don't put something in the way that we're going to have to move later. So if it means, you know, throwing the water lines four or five feet deep at this point until we get it back up to this level then that's what we're gonna do but trust me it'll pay off in the future oh hold on we gotta see chris better well kind of uh, i don't really know who designed this windshield wiper that cleans below eye level here hey what's up with the mask corona oh all right it's dusty man i can't breathe <laughs> it is a little dusty out here it's a good thing i could dig a lot straighter hole than i could paint uh it gets a little crazy there it gets a little crazy Pretty much over to the chicken coop now. It's just right behind us. Got my inspector Chris who's still wearing that mask, man. You, you alright, dude? It's not that dusty out here. Speak for yourself, man. You got for your enclosed AC. I'm yeah. over here struggling. I've been looking at the new uh uh razor or the new whatever, the new Polaris Rangers. And I've been telling Chris, like, man, they got the really nice one now with the enclosed cab air conditioning. He's like, what the heck do you need an enclosed cab for? And he was adamant about that. Chris, after a day of driving around the golf cart, do we need an enclosed cab? No, we don't. Oh, we don't need it? No. Are you just going to keep a box of masks in the golf cart? Yeah, no. Anything out here, I think, uh, okay, well, there goes my phone for the 45th time today. Um, anything out here, it needs to be enclosed. Air conditioning's nice, just mainly to keep the dust out. It, it is dusty out here. We've got Chris, Abel, and Poppy. They're dropping all the pipes now. Now, would a trencher be probably more ideal for the job that we just did here of digging? Yes and no. Yes in the fact that we wouldn't have as much spoils and as much backfilling to do. I don't know that one that I would have rented would have got as deep as we needed to go over there. Plus, we had already rented the uh, Mini X over there. So out here, uh, like powered walk behind trenchers, like the size we would need out here, rent for about the same as the Mini X. So instead of renting two or three pieces of equipment, we're just gonna work with one. And you know, I mean, hey, pretty much all the digging's done. They've already got the pipe in. If you guys wanna go see Chris lay some pipe. All right, viewer discretion advised, guys. You're about to watch Chris lay some pipe. Get it, Chris. Get it, Chris! It's kind of the same size. Oh yeah? Close. So we're not exactly sure what we're gonna do now that we've gotten to the stalls, if we're gonna go up and over and drop spigots down, because I know the animals are gonna mess with the spigots and all that, so if we keep them up high enough, I mean, the donkeys aren't very tall, so I think we might just go high 
run it along that beam right there and drop them down into each stall. Um, the auto waters are probably actually gonna be on the outside because we don't typically keep these guys penned up. They do free realm. So the second we get that little bit of fence that we got left over there, and I say little bit, but it means a lot of it, um, fixed, these guys are all gonna be back outside. So all the auto waterers are gonna be on this side. That way, uh, oh, watch out wheels. What's up, Willie? I know, look, you've been taking some dirt baths, man. You are dirty. Oh, does that camera smell good? Yeah, we got Abel, our PVC master over here, getting all the couplings on. One of the other things we did today is uh, we got the whole, well, what used to be the pump house. Um, all the crap and stuff cleared out of it. Our dumpster's full right now, otherwise that would already be in the dumpster. But we've got everything exposed. I mean, you know, the pump burned up, but the piping's still good. Luckily, it's all galvanized underground because typically when fires come through like this, if they ran PVC down, Obviously with heat, the PVC would melt and our pump is 300 feet down. So if the PVC that's kind of holding the pump melts, uh, I believe at that point the pump drops. And I ain't no well expert and I'm still amazed at how this whole process works of like underground stuff. But uh, yeah, I don't know how fun it is to fish something that falls from 300 feet to 600 feet, which is the bottom of our well here. I really wish we did have the pump up and running because then we could test the beautiful job Abel did over here on all of our sprinkler valve setup. You guys know, um, we'll pre-fire, we were working on getting this whole yard sprinklers because again, we're trying to get away from the hoses. Every animal had a hose running to it. Every sprinkler had hose. I mean, this place is just hoses on hoses, on hoses, on hoses. Sounds like Chris's house on a Saturday night, right buddy? So we're going just all underground. Um, Abel's got all of our sprinkler valves in. Everything's looking great. Obviously our whole new main line coming in that the boys over at Perry Plumbing did for us. And all we really need is the uh, sprinkler timer, which I already have. So we're gonna get that all wired up. Um, and then in a couple of days, we can turn everything on. Now, one of the other things we're gonna try and uh, get a little start on today is, if you guys remember, I bought those uh, four by four posts. I was gonna put motion lights on them up around all the animal enclosures because well, it's super dark out there and there are mountain lions. Ain't nobody trying to get eaten out here, uh, or the chupacabras, because they've been running around like crazy. I think Chris heard a chupacabra over there in a Dedek truck earlier, so he's a little bit hesitant to walk around that thing. But I think what we're gonna do instead, um, being that it's so dark and putting the solar lights, what we're gonna do is we're gonna run those party lights that I've got a ton of boxes of in the back of my truck and I was super stoked to put at the old house and we never got to actually enjoy them. Um, we're gonna put a bunch of posts all down this strand right here, all the way around the driveway. And we're gonna string the party lights out here as kind of a temporary light setup until uh you know until we get like street lights and stuff i do know they make solar street lights that are pretty decent but they're kind of hit or miss in the reviews um and we're gonna put a better lighting plan together but we need something on the temporary we're actually not gonna backfill those trenches that i dug today because we're gonna be throwing some conduit in there as well i want to get some lights up to the animal pens and all that stuff so since we got the trenches open we might as well use them we're gonna be using the 272 to dig, being that the auger on the uh, excavator turned out to be pretty useless. We might be able to get away with it on these ones, but this thing's just so much easier and faster. Guys, I seriously need to invest in one of these things. I mean, if they weren't like a million dollars, because you gotta have fully enclosed cab. You gotta have like the cushy ones out here. Obviously, I would want tracks. This one's set up right now for street use, but like when I bought those four buys, I was planning on the old like whoosh, whoosh, post hole digging. Yeah, we just dug, I don't know, what, 20 of them in under 10 minutes. All right, Chris, you wanna, can you go clean the holes out? No, man. Eight hours, you know. Oh, quitting time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. We don't want overtime. Yeah. 
Now, if we had enough posts, uh, we would start laying those out today, but like I said, we only had four. I think actually we had five, but one of them got sacrificed for the fence building project. So I'm gonna pick some more of those up uh, tonight and then we'll start dropping all of our posts and figure out how we're getting power to all of our lights and all that. One of the last things I wanna do today before the sun goes down is our lawn back there has been, uh, has been without water for quite some time. And out here being that it's so dry, that lawn is actually said to be watered an hour and a half every single morning. So going about a week without water, uh, that's a pretty big change for that lawn. And from what I've heard, it was uh, quite the task to get it to grow out here. So I don't want to lose the nice, beautiful lawn back here. It was actually one of the features that made me want to buy the house. I'm a big fan of like greenery and tropical and nice. So you see all the dirt and cactus and not so tropical behind me. That's going to change eventually. And the good thing is when we're using the auger behind the walls, um, this actually isn't the nicest stuff, but some of the dirt right behind the wall that they used to backfill is actually really nice soil. You can see how nice and dark and rich it is right there. So that gives me hope because we do have big plans for plants that are going to go out here but for now what we're going to do is i think i got enough hose we're going to use the uh, submersible pump that's in the pool and we're going to use some of this disgusting pool water that is really only good for putting out fires and watering the lawn and well i don't want to jinx it but i'm going to assume we ain't going to have any more fires being that we're already pretty dang burned we did get the old predator two inch pump from Harbor Freight. So we are going to be building our own uh, water trailer. That way again, you know, we're working towards being self-sufficient out here and being able to handle our own in any type of situation. So let's see how good my little reducer here is going to work. Hopefully it's not too much pressure. We'll get that screwed onto the two inches down in there. And I guess the one good thing about this property, having 5,000 hoses feeding everything is now that we're not using them anymore, I've got a hose for dang near every situation I could ever encounter right now. All right, buddy, let's see. Let's see if we blow that end off or if this works out. Plug her in, Chris. If the pump even still works. Yeah. Uh, Malfunction. Oh, all right, you got this. I hear pump. Oh, jeez. <laughs> all right, well, it was not the connection I uh, thought we'd have to worry about. <laughs> Dog, do you think it was like Jaws jumping out of there at you? I was like, what the f heck was that? Jeez, dude. This one's not glued because this is the connection we take off all the time, but I think uh, I get a little... Get a little push on there, Chris. I think we'll be all right. Probably a lot of back pressure in it now because we're going throttling down to three quarter inch garden hose. But all right, Chris, try again, buddy. Did you have a heart attack? You good? <laughs> all right. Well, let's go to the other end. Let's see what we got. Our ranch hand's car is parked on the hose, but I think uh, the hose can handle it. All right, the car might seriously be an issue here. Dang, dude, we got water. Oh, you're the sprinkler? Well, it ain't a ton of pressure, but hey, that's enough to water some grass right there. I'm pretty happy with that. It did get freshly mowed today as well. Maybe we let this run long enough tonight. We'll get a lot of moisture in the ground. Assuming we got enough pool water over there, but it's about as good as use that we're gonna have for that pool water. Crazy how little you think of your water consumption until you have a way to like visually measure it. And now I'm not talking in like the hippy dippy save the earth kind of way, but like in a dollars and cents kind of way. And when you're low on water kind of way, I don't think we're gonna run out of any uh, pool water here anytime soon, water in the grass. So with that, we're gonna wrap up. Tomorrow's another day. Hopefully you guys are enjoying some of the projects around the ranch. I know it's a little changed from the truck stuff, but don't worry, we will be doing both. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching and thank you for all the support, the love the messages on Instagram, YouTube, um, just everywhere, the emails. I can't thank all you guys enough. We got a heck of a team, all you subscribers. I mean, at this point, you guys are friends. You guys come along with the journey. You're dang near family. But do me a huge favor and uh, swing on over to workfortapparel.com. Check out what we got over there. I would be eternally grateful. Uh, you guys are the best. I'm out. Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh.